the opening of Fu Jiao Five, the big form. Okay, the first movement tells a complete story in and of itself as to what the focus of the form will be. There are many, many, many advanced, very advanced features of this form, and it would do you a great service to pay attention to what's going on between the movements, especially uh, in relation to the elbow. Very, very important. Also, very important, this circle, vitally important to the structure of the form. But that comes at the end of this introductory conditioning uh, section of the form. Also very important, center of the palm. Vitally important to transferring energy to the fingertips. So the first movement is straight up. Okay. Well, we make a fist. All right. So when you make your fist, you want to put the energy, the energy comes, wraps around back into the hand and solidifies this area without making a Schwarzenegger muscle. Okay. Just to solidify, to try to get the energy into this area of the arm, to fill that whole area of the arm and to fill your hand with energy because you're about to release it. So it's tension and release. The tension that occurs here is not flexing, you know, a, a muscle. It's tension between two limbs and the bones connecting. It's tension that happens from within the movement itself. So the first movement, you stand straight, your hips forward, okay? So, you stand straight. Breathe in. <laughs> now, I'm pressing, okay, against these tendons as they're being flexed, which causes the natural adhesive that occurs in the body to become stronger, like an oyster or a muscle or a barnacle. It's the same type of adhesive that holds the tendons onto the bone. So you strengthen that. <laughs> and then you release. And now there's nothing. It's just an open full hand, full of intention, ready to continue into the form. So from here, and you breathe out according to the what the movement requires at the same speed and intensity. The same dynamic range as the movement. <laughs> it ends there. Breathe in. And then, okay? So, when the claw happens at the end of this whipping motion, it occurs at the very end of the whip itself. This is telling a great story about this form. That's why I'm spending time on it now. So that later, it becomes a part of, I think my pinky almost just popped out. <laughs> it becomes almost a part of every single claw application. Okay, so again, one, <clears throat> release. Bend the knees, turn the body. <laughs> Something seems to be missing from executing the Tiger Claw correctly in almost everything I see that's available visually. And that includes having taught over 10,000 students, been friend to or brother to thousands more in New York City, Chinatown, across this country, across the world, everything on YouTube, all this. All this, what's missing? One specific thing that I'd like to talk about is timing. Very specifically, from here, I see this. Closing the claw slowly. 
over a great distance, the length of the arm. What's happening in that instance is these people are treating their claw like they're squeezing a tennis ball. Does it strengthen these tendons? Yes. Does it strengthen these muscles? Yes. Does it train your claw? No. The first movements are not calisthenic movements. They are designed to teach you timing and position and proper breathing. So from here, we open and we actually, using our scapula a little bit to retract and contract, to stick the claw in, once it's in, it doesn't keep closing down to nothing. It goes in a reasonable amount where you still have the shape of a claw and then using the dynamic tension to unify your efforts into sharpening your fingers. Once they're in, they're in. We very rarely squeeze. Very rarely. It can be used in conjunction with a claw. But you're using other forces are at work here. There's no need to have a hand uh, like a machine. If you use all your muscles in concert together in the right way, at the right time, you can stick it in. <laughs> it's still going in. It's still going in. It's tearing away. The dynamic tension trains the tendons in our arms and hands to become stronger. But the position of the claw is something that would actually go into a person. Not this. That's squeezing and holding on. We don't want to be in contact that long. This is an exposition of great pride. Great exposition. Confidence. Reach out. <laughs> Show them the technique. This is your technique. This is your time to unify mind, body, and spirit, and the claw to enliven the spirit of the tiger. So, which brings me to the circular claws, whether it be the double, so-called double tiger claw, or other circular movements. Even as this circle vertical circle. Is this a strike? No, not in our system. Can it be used as a strike to and rip? Yes, it can be. Kind of precarious, a little difficult to pull off. You've got to completely dominate that individual, which is part, part of our uh, strategy anyway. But more importantly, is to get the claw to set to set, vertical circle, hey! and then rip. You rip and twist, and the claw does the rest. In the diagonal circle, we're turning with the body even, okay? The claw is set at your center. Here's my center. Hey! It's in, and rip, in, and rip, see? So you stick it in, and then you rip it using the elbow. Elbow. It's all elbow, and when you get good, a little bit better, you use your hip and your knee and your heel. <laughs> and you set it, and set it, and you put your spirit into it. But it has to have the same quality as the retracting claw. Thank you very much. Have a great day.